Okay, hey, what's up, everybody? It's Tiffany and... Tiff, what's up? And we are here for our weekly marriage video. And so today, we kind of got something a little different going on. We got... Um, Tub has prepared something where he really want to talk to the men. So I'm going to be here kind of just like support, chime in. But um, he wanted to share what was on his heart for the men tonight. So, well, All right. We just... Um... I just wanted to share something, Lane, you know, for all the married men that are in a, uh, a marriage and all the uh, men that just got married. And so this is, I came across this, uh, this study and I was reading a couple of scriptures about it. And it was, it's, it, it just, it was very good. Um, and we talk about how men supposed to be the head of the household. And it's right, men are supposed to be the head of the household, but we are supposed to be different. And we have um, took it cardinal minded, you know, as a man supposed to be the boss and what he says goes and, and machoism and stuff like that. So, and also about the marriage and everything. Because you don't boss me around. No, we, I don't. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I don't. And. Uh, we, we always make decisions together. So, this theme is called Becoming of One. It's talking about the uh, marriage. And it said, Becoming of One among the most important journeys you will take in your marriage. God's Word gives you a specific path to becoming one with each other. One of the greatest enemies to marriage is selfishness. Now, check this out. When individuals display selfish attitude in life, it prevents the couple from becoming a one in the spirit and purpose. The marriage relationship cannot grow and evolve into greatness with time when the partners are selfish. So, it's saying that, you know, you can't be selfish. You have to you have to give yourself to your wife and to your family. And you can't think about just me, 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 I, 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 I. It's us. Us, us, us. We, 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 we are together. So. That's um, hard. That's hard for some people to do because... Especially when you've been single and you just been used to just, you know, doing everything on your own. So it's it's hard for people to end up doing that sometimes. And it's a funny thing that you said single. Now I'll check this out. Leave relationships of the past. So your past relationships do not bring them into your marriage. Mm. Or you know, saying, "Oh, we just still friends. We good friends." And that's my ex. No. Create a new life between you and your spouse. Define your life together. Do not try to bring your single lifestyle into your marriage. Hmm. Can you do it? Right. Um, to leave all other relationships indicates to serve yourself from the previous relationships before committing yourself to your spouse. Break ties of responsibility to others so that you can concentrate and assume responsibility to your spouse. Live in such a way that brings you together, not separating you. So. That's good. It, it talks about breaking all ties. So, you know, oh, I got a responsibility to, to, to this person or this person, you know, it's up to me. To, to. No, you have to break all ties. You have to, you know, yeah, I understand, you know, my mom is sick and stuff like that and I'm responsible for her, but my responsibility first come to my wife. Okay, so you know I have to serve my wife first. 
You know what I'm saying? And this I want to jump in and say something. And yeah. A lot of times, it's families that come into yes. relationships and they really tear up relationships. So it's important to know because the Bible even talks about, um, you know, how when you get married, you have to leave your mother and father and you have to cleave to your spouse, you know. And that's hard for a lot of people to take, especially when you've been in a situation where you've been like, the head of the household, the head of the family, and you weren't married, then when you get into a marriage situation, the family should understand that you have a responsibility to that. But it's hard for a lot of people to take that. And you said cling to your wife, right? Mm -hmm. All right, it says cleave tightly to the one you've committed your life to. It means I committed my life to her. So I have to Bring her in close. Love on her. Show her love and affection. Understanding. The Gopi love. God's love. Unconditional love. All right? Hold on to one another. But do not strangle each other. You, <laughs> you, you. you are both individuals with special interests and space must be given. Never seek such independence that you lose the value to cleaning to one another. To cleave is, means to weld together and affection to one another. So that means, you know, come together. I mean, don't be a, you know, my, my wife, I used to, she used to say, oh my God, you're a bugaboo. You know, don't he's, be. He's clingy. He's right. Like so, so really overly affectionate. He's like way more affectionate than me. So right. So don't you know? Don't every, smother somebody. Right. Don't smother him, but still, you know, cling to him. You know, what I'm saying, be one with your wife. You know, show that you love her, or show that you show your husband that you love him. You know, what I'm saying, you know, don't be like, oh my god. Oh, I can't Can do you move? that. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, so I try, I try not to do that. So you know what I'm saying. So it says here, right here it goes. Without this sharing responsibility, it is easy to grow apart as you grow older. So if you don't have no responsibility to, to each other, then you're gonna grow apart. The older you get, the more you say, "I don't know that person. I don't know her." You know what I'm saying? An old yeah. saying. You know how the old saying is. You know. Um, we well, can live with somebody with 20 some years and still don't know them. Well, you do know them, but you grew apart. Right. And so, it's, and after, at, when you when your kids grow up and stuff, you know, it's like at first you'd be so concentrated on just raising the family, but you got to cultivate your relationship too because at some point the kids are going to be grown. They never gone, but they're going right. to be grown. So. Yeah. So then when the kids are grown and out the house, you know, it's like, oh, my God, I'm here with this person. I don't, really, I don't know her. Right. But y'all never share responsibility together. Like, we share responsibility together. Like, okay, I'll take the kids to, uh, I'll pick them up. Okay, I'll take them to work. Okay. And, and make decisions right, together. You together. Know? And the one thing that you said about cleaving, um, the welding together of a relationship it's really a process, and I think that as you're married, the longer you're married, the tighter the bond. Yeah. Um, because I actually feel closer to him now than I did when we first got married, you know. And so it's been, it'll be 20 years, so I feel a lot closer. So I think the cleaving part is something that should be done, of course. You got to do it, but I think as you go the bond gets tighter. It's like a process. Right. And so like this, just like this, wives, check this out. And husbands, you know, check this out. You may not love basketball, and he does, but you go. Even if you have to take a book and read just to be with him. You know what I'm saying? If you make football, basketball, and you don't even know nothing about it, you'd be like, okay, you just, but you just want to be with your husband. Just all right, I'm gonna I, do that. I gotta work on that because you know I'm not into sports. So. Right, and then so it says. So now, men, now we all do this. You know what I'm saying? 
we all do this because we like shopping with them. It's like, oh my God, just pick something and go. It's like, you know, so men, you may not enjoy shopping, but you go even if you look at the tools or fishing rods. Or the, you know, the sport, like the sports, you know, look at the football or the shoes and stuff like that, just to be with her. So, you know, you're like, okay, baby, I, you know, she, let's go shopping. You're like, I feel the same wow. way. I don't be wanting to go either. But you don't have that problem out of me because I'm not, and you, you know, I'm not a big good. shopping person. Yeah, but like, when you go, when you go, though, you. I, I go with a list. Yeah. Like, go to the grocery store. I go with a list. I'm on a mission. And, I'm focused. I get what I need. And But but still, though, I'll be like, yeah. But and then, then I don't take y'all because y'all, y'all will make me spend more money. And you so. And the kids. Well, anyway, but still. Cause I, you know you throw everything in the basket, right? Cause, cause, <laughs> I, cause, right? Cause, then, cause, I'd be like, okay, come on now, we we done looked at all that. All you gotta do is find the stuff now that, that you know you know, it's already in the same aisle that you went when it was it's, last week. Hold on. It has not changed since... You talking about somebody else because this is not me. You the one uh -uh. go in the store and I'll be standing in the line and then you'll leave, be gone for five minutes and come back with an arm full of stuff. Because I done been with you and forgot what I was supposed to get. That's why you have to be like me. Organize the focus. Go with a list and you but can get still, in though, but, but still, but man, you know what I'm talking about. Then you go in there, just like we went that one time we was shopping and we went to uh, Menards. Gray and Menards. And she went for that paint. I was like, just pick a color. Well, that's that's different. That's a process. And then, I, and then I just said, you know what? Paint. I want to see what Menards got. So I went to the tool section and I was in heaven. It's I was, okay. You know, and look at all the ratchets and stuff like that and pliers and and cutters and you know lawnmowers and stuff like that. So I was I was real good. So, but still, you know what I'm saying. So it's just like that. And then I want to get to this last one. Okay, make it quick because we've right. gone over our time. All right, okay, baby. All right. It says about the man role the husband about the husband. Role of a husband. The role of a husband is headship. The headship is to head of the household. Biblically speaking, this does not mean to be in charge or demanding or giving orders. Headship is not being the boss. It is about responsibility for the men biblically Interpretation is head of household is hard to accept because the cardinal idea is machoism and can can get in the way. Headship is the can I mean I'm sorry. Headship in the home can be defined as find out what your spouse needs and what to do is necessary to make it happen. So make it happen, Captain. Headship is responsibility. God put Adam. You gonna read all that? Hold on. We, yeah, hold on. This, this, this is good. Now, I know, but God put Adam to sleep and gave him. I'm sorry. God put Adam in his rest, and God took a rib and made woman, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. If God had made woman from bone of finger, man could possibly justify in pointing out the wise problems. If God made woman from the bone of the man's foot, he could possibly justify keeping the woman under his feet. But God rather but, but rather God chose to make woman from the man's rib so that he can only justify by pulling her pulling his wife close to his heart and holding her tightly. A man's headship is found in loving and serving his wife. Repeat, a man's headship is found in loving and serving his wife. 
So that's what the headship of the, that's what about being the head of the household means, man. It means loving, responsibility, and, and serving your wife. You know, make it happen, Captain, by by doing the necessary needs to provide a loving home, you know, a peaceful home, you know, and a happy life means a happy wife. So don't be cardinal minded saying you're in charge and I'm the last, you know, just the word, the last word spoken and being abusive or being mentally abusive you know that's that's not what what this is this is talking about loving responsibility and making things possible for the family so um i said enough <laughs> and my, my wife is you know I'm so just, i'm just listening it was good though it was you know, a little so, longer. But, Sorry, we went over we went over about five minutes. I try to keep the videos about ten minutes because right. I want to make sure that we hold everybody's attention and that we get the points across. But but this is this had to be you know this had to be shared and I'm gonna get to the wife too. So well but, I'm gonna probably get to the wife. Well too. yeah 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 she'll get to the wife. Yeah. So you know this 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 is um, so next week. Right. So this week he was kind of talking to the, the husbands. Next yeah. week I'll kind of be talking to the wives. So, all right. Well, it's been another great week. So I hope everybody's going to have a good week this week. I know I plan to. Are you going to plan to have a good week? Yes, I am. God is God is good. And, hey, man, I can't complain, man. God has been blessing. And he's been doing the utmost. So thank all God. Right. All right, then. So check it out. We'll see you guys next week. So y'all be good. See y'all later. All right. We love you. All right. Bye.